Hi, Chris Lutz, trainer for Tremble Forensics. We're really excited about In Tremble Forensics Reveal version 2.8 released in December of 2021. Now, one of the things we really hit on in this release was we wanted to improve the bullet trajectory tool using feedback from you as the customer. So we took a lot of the feedback that we got from you and we tried to incorporate it in the latest release of the bullet trajectory tool and I think you're going to like it. So let's get into it. I have Tremble Forensics Reveal open and I have a scene that I have used used our bullet trajectory tool on. Uh, we have a subject that's, uh, it was a victim of a crime and is now laying uh, face down on the bed. And we have three trajectory rods that went through the bed frame and into the wall. And when I turn on my trajectory cones that I have, uh, that I have created here, uh, it shows the approximate area that the uh, shots came from. So the subject of this video is to show you how to do this, how to do bullet trajectory calculations using the cone of probability without having to use spheres or any additional items at the scene using nothing but a laser scanner and the Trimble Forensics Reveal bullet trajectory tool. So let's get started. So we have our scene. Let's take a real quick tour of it here. So in top down view, you can see that we have a uh, looks like a hotel room here. And in the back bedroom of the hotel room, we have I've posed out an avatar. If I take the point cloud away and we simplify it out a little bit, we have an avatar that's slumped over the bed. And then when I turn my point cloud on, you can see we have some trajectory rods and those kinds of things that we have to deal with. So jumping into 3D view as we're looking at the scene. I'll change my navigation speed down just a little bit, make it a little easier. All right. So we're looking at our scene now from 3D. And as I zoom in here, we have three trajectory rods. I'm just going to work on these two, but we do have a third right here. And these were laser scanned using the Trimble X7 solution. And again, you'll see here there are no there's no spheres. Uh, there's nothing nothing more complicated here than a quarter inch tried trajectory rod um, that your standard issue uh, fiberglass trajectory rod that went through the bed frame and into the wall and then we have our two trajectories and of course a third right here and then we have our avatar posed so our our goal here is to draw in our bullet trajectory using the new and improved trajectory tool in Trimble Forensics Reveal now to start this out I've created a layer called trajectory and so I'm going to start off with that so I'm going to make that active and I found this is easier to do from a top down view. Now with our trajectories here, I'm just going to work on these two speed up my navigation. Here we go. Get zoomed in and we can see our two trajectory rods from here. I'm going to make my point size just a little bit bigger and a little bit easier to see. And you can see here we have two very good trajectory rods and also a third right here. So with these two trajectory rods, I'm going to again make my trajectory layer active. I'm going to turn on my point cloud snap. And again, this is the thing that allows us to snap things to our point cloud. I'm going to go up to tools and I'll click on bullet trajectory. From here, we select our rod caliber. So what trajectory rod caliber were we using? Well, I was using a quarter inch rod and it just so happened it fit very well in these holes. So this is a 22, 223, 556 or 5.45 millimeter. And for a thickness, we can define a thickness in here, but it's really just easier to use our rod caliber. Again, with our point cloud snap turned on, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to find one of these points on the rod. Click here. And then I'll come out here. Next for rod number two. Down here where I see the rod start to disappear. Come all the way out to the end and click there. Now, once I'm done, I'm just going to hit my escape key so that I'm, I'm going to stop drawing rods and I'm going to jump into a 3D view to look and see just to make sure that those rods didn't snap down onto the bed or anything else. And it looks like they are right where we want them to be. I'll just turn those objects off just to make it a little less complicated here. All right, as we can see, there's a little bit of bow in these rods. Now, if we were using, say, spheres or something to that, uh, to that effect, you wouldn't necessarily see the bow in the rod. Uh, you may have put a sphere out on the end and a sphere here, but really you start losing your trajectory right around the middle of the rod, again, just due to the gravitational sag of that rod. So what we're going to do is we're going to shorten it up just a little bit. And this is just easier done from our from our layer manager. So I'll select bullet trajectory four. 
and we can see our rod. So what I'm going to do here again with my point cloud snap turned on is I'm just going to grab it and I'm going to move it back. Just slide it back on that collection of points to the point where it begins to sag and we begin to lose the true directionality of our trajectory rod. Now again, a small amount of error here is going to be amplified the further out you go, but going from end to end is not going to give us the true trajectory either. So we're wanting to get in here fairly close and get a best fit on that on that collection of points. We can see here that that's a pretty good fit right there. And that's, a, again, a good best fit along all of those points that were laser scanned. Again, this was done using the X7 solution. Um, if you have a chance to uh, contact your local Trimble Forensics partner and uh, request a demo of the Trimble X7 solution, you might be surprised at what the instrument is capable of. So I'm going to move my trajectory rod back on this one. Zoom in here just to make sure it is where I want it to be. And again, if I need to make any small adjustments here, I sure can. Again, if it's not fitting quite the way that you want, make some small adjustments to it. What we're going after is a best fit. Again, before that rod begins to sag out, we want a best fit on that rod. And again, you don't need spheres, you don't need anything but the rods themselves. Now this can also be done if you have an optical total station. Say you uh, used your optical total station to take reflectorless points at the area where the rod entered the, um, entered the uh, surface that it went into, and then you shot say two or three points uh, reflectorless using an optical total station. You could sure do that here, um, and then connect your, uh, connect your trajectory rod to those points using a point snap rather than a cloud snap like I'm doing here. So moving on, we have our first rod, which is bullet trajectory four, and our second rod, which is bullet trajectory five. On bullet trajectory four, I'm going to click on, once I have it activated in my properties window, I'm going to click on show cone of possibility. That will create my cone. If I want to extend my cone out, say to 20 feet, extend that out and show where that shot likely came from. Next up, I'll do that on bullet trajectory number five. I'll show the cone of possibility and extend that out another, say, 20 feet to see where did that come from. Now, we can see here that the cones are the same color, which makes them a little difficult to tell apart, especially if you've got a scene where you have multiple parties exchanging rounds back and forth, such as an officer involved. And so to make it really clear and concise for the judge and the jury to understand, down here at the bottom, we have the ability to change your cone color. So on bullet trajectory five, I'm going to change that over to, say, a green color. And you notice here it kind of obscures everything that's beyond it. So what I can do here is I can change my see-through and make it transparent. I can do the same thing on bullet trajectory four. Scroll down and change the cone color maybe to a red color to indicate this round was separate from the first one or to create some type of visual contrast between one and the other. And I can make my cone color change color and then also I can change my see-through. Now from here, to make it really clear and concise, we can turn our laser scan off and turn our models back on. And now we have a very clear and concise way to demonstrate our trajectory rods and the cone of probability. Now with the cone of probability, we can also change our cone variance. So if we wanted this to be, say, an eight degree cone of variance, something a little outside of standard, usually five degrees is our standard, but we can go out to an eight degree. And as you can see here, it creates a much wider cone for us to be able to, uh, to, be able to see which, uh, a, just a larger area, again, a more possible area of where that came from. I can drop that down to a five degree as well. Now, something else that's new, in this uh, version uh, revealed 2.8 with the bullet trajectory tool is that we now have the horizontal angle and vertical angle displayed. Now the horizontal angle is going to be 124 degrees 
off of the x axis. So if our x right here is zero degrees, we go counterclockwise 124 degrees, and this is our horizontal angle. So an angle that's parallel with the ground is 124 degrees. Our vertical angle off of 90 degrees. So if it was a flat, this was straight out, let me get dropped down here. So if a level was at zero degrees, this is now inclined or pointing upwards at a 5.71 degree angle. And so you can use these to validate your measurements uh, in your 3D CAD environment with those that were given to you by the at scene measurements. So if you're using a protractor and you're measuring the rod on the wall or whatever surface, you can validate those, uh, those field measurements with the, um, the values that are, you are generating here in a CAD environment. So that sums up some of the big, uh, the big changes that we made in the bullet trajectory tool. Again, adding the see-through in there, adding both the horizontal and vertical angle readouts to tell us what they are supposed to be, and a couple other things that uh, just make it a little easier. So the rod caliber, being able to change your rod caliber, changing your path diameter here for our original line. Uh, if I turn off that cone, so right now it's at a 38 or a 357. If I change it to a 45, you'll see here that it made it just a little bit fatter, able to fit that uh, that rod size that you have. But these were 22 caliber rods, so I drop it down. And again, I can turn my point cloud back on to see how it fits and be able to see it. So again, this isn't using spheres or anything like that. We can get a good trajectory analysis using just the points that were laser scanned on the 22 caliber rod. So again, that, that kind of rounds out the, the basics of the bullet trajectory tool, how to use it, and the updates that are in Reveal version 2.8. Now, if you have any questions about this video, how to use the bullet trajectory tool, um, if you, again, if you have any questions at all, feel free to leave them in the comments section below, and we would be more than happy to answer them. Thank you very much. Stay safe.